I just met a man who had on a tan Kango beanie and a red waterproof jumpsuit. I've never seen a red waterproof jumpsuit in my life, but this man had it on with his beanie. There's some things you wanna be aware of if you wanna start an Airbnb, especially in somewhere like New York. You could barely get a room in New York for $1,000 per month. Right now, I'm probably the cheapest, cheapest two bedroom Airbnb on the platform. <sighs> All that work and we haven't even started yet. And they say real estate is passive. Who lied? You know, I was just thinking to myself, like, yeah, we made it in New York. We ain't got no more snow. We had a pretty calm winter. And then here comes today, out of nowhere. Snowstorm, blizzard. Woo! Just when you thought you made it out. So we just just pulled up to Lowe's. I needed some salt, shovel, and hold up. And I also needed something to clean off my car because right now, I so have to rush out the house, stop at the hardware store to get some stuff. Two bags of salt, shovel, car cleaner, and a little um, what is that? Like a container so that I could like pour the soil out easier. Over hundred dollars. Is that not kind of crazy? And I think two of the cribs right now have no salt, so which is why I had to get two bags, but all that work and we haven't even started yet. And they say real estate is passive. Who lied? Pants, these North Face pants, absolutely amazing. Uh, I got these on my first trip when I wanted to go snowboard. I don't know what kind of style or brand there is, brand it is, but you don't feel anything at all. Like keeps you warm and keeps you waterproof. Absolutely amazing. Ten out of ten. Oh shit, trunks are open. Yeah, let me let me tell y'all what just key fob is in the vehicle. What are you talking about, bro? Let me tell y'all what just happened when I went to go pick up these supplies, right? So here's what I got, right? I got two bags of salt, one shovel, one of these things. I don't know if the car oh did I break my mirror? No, we good. One of these things to clean the car, right? And I got like a little container where I could pour the salt out easier. Now I have to get a cart to put all these items in the cart, right? So I'm gonna check out. They ain't got no registers open, only self-checkout. Now, if you know, you know. But I wasn't even on that type of time to keep it a buck. I go to self-checkout. There's one person that's like, like a worker standing there. So I grab the scanner, I scan the shovel, I scan the little container with the salt in it, and I scan the two bags of salt. I did not scan this, not intentionally, 
but because like the way it was just it was hidden like I missed it when I looked on the screen I'm like it's not really adding up I think I have one more item so I look back at the cart sure enough I had this item so I went to go scan it but before I did I looked up at the associate working it and she was just looking at me like low key I think she's gonna hold it down if I ain't scan it and it you know it wasn't it wasn't on purpose but I don't know the look she gave me was like I got you I got you I'm not even gonna hold you I can't really see shit like this truck this Jeep absolutely one of the best investments I have ever purchased like I, I love this thing Jeep gang alright let's see if we can actually get some snow shovel at these properties because it's already almost 10 o'clock and we haven't even started yet which is kind of disappointing so let's get moving thing why well, look like the ground is still covered in snow that's crazy but besides that let me tell you about New York right because in New York you meet the most interesting characters I just met a man who had on the tan Kango beanie and a red waterproof jumpsuit I never seen a red waterproof jumpsuit in my life but this man had it on with his beanie and he approached me he said yo can I shovel for you? Now, I thought he was asking for some bread, so I was like, nah, I'm almost done anyway. I ain't got it for you. He said, nah, nah, nah. I just need a shovel so that you could take a picture of me. And I'm like, a picture? I'm like, why? He said, because, you know, I'm talking to this girl. I'm trying to get her. And she said, I ain't got no hustle in me. So if I take a picture while me shoveling some snow, she could see that I'm about it. I don't think that's the hustle that she meant, but I admire the finesse. So I took the picture of homie because he said he going, you know, Show shorty that he got it in him. Shout out to the finesse. You only see that in New York. Only New York. Alright, gang. Just pull up to property number two. I don't think this one's gonna be as bad. You know, we got mostly water now. Uh, and Brooklyn, not as bad as the island, so hopefully this one goes a lot quicker. Because I'm tired. The boys are already tired. So, put some, you know, shovel a little bit, put some salt down, and we out of here. Here's the main reason, though. Let me tell y'all. Besides the fact that I actually have to come out in snow because, you know, your boy don't want a lawsuit, right? Trust me. If y'all know, y'all know. I don't want no lawsuits, so come out here and snow all the properties. But one of the main properties I wanted to see is I got a Airbnb that I do in Brooklyn. The guests were supposed to check out tomorrow. No, my bad. They were supposed to check out today. But they hit me up yesterday, last night, saying that they're checking out early. Which, a little odd to me. And not only did she say she's checking out early yesterday, but she sent me a picture and said that they broke the door. <sighs> they broke the door and she's willing to replace it. But she says or she claims she was trying to kill a fly with a mop. And that's how she hit the door. Bruh. It's winter time. As you can see, it's snowing outside, right? There's there's not really any flies around. That's number one. And number two, who is trying to kill a fly with a mop? I've heard of paper, a piece of towel, a fly swatter. I've never heard of trying to swat a fly with a mop. So that's the main reason I'm here is because I want to pull up to the Airbnb and see what other damage is there besides the door because I know there's probably going to be something else. That way I can let the contractor know like, yo, take care of this, take care of this, so I can get a place ready for the next booking, which is going to be like, I don't know, a week or two. 
so but I mean it's a price you pay right like I said this shit is not passive don't believe the hype you gotta put the work in it is rewarding but you gotta put the work in that's the only way and you are gonna have some some bullish pop up like you know every now and then where it's like yo it's, it's just annoying but you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta think about the long term goal so that's the next stop pull up back to that airbnb and see what the condition look like because i have not seen it in 79 nights that's how long the reservation was for so you know see what we got all right so before we check out the airbnb we're going to do one last shoveling you know get this property right it's only right you know finish out the day strong and then then we're going to check out the airbnb to see if there's any damage so one last property for Brooklyn. Well, might be one last property for Brooklyn. But we're here now at the Airbnb, shovel is, then move on. There's a lot of snow here. get to see this Airbnb after almost three months let's see what we got now on the first glance just on the initial walkthrough like the place looks looks really good it looks like they did a like a deep clean which is kind of crazy besides the typical wash of dishes and all that it looks like they washed the linen so looks like they washed the towels sheets um clean the stove clean the microwave everything looks pretty decent and i'm i'm actually kind of surprised because i mean communication was good and they told me that there was damage actually let me show you the damage so this is what she messaged me and told me that um was broken this is the entrance this is the bedroom door and they got a hole in the door i don't know i don't know uh, i don't know how that happens it doesn't really make sense to me now what they told me was they were mopping and there was a fly and it was trying to kill the fly with the mop and you and you get that but listen could have happened maybe maybe but at the same time like let's let's be honest here it's still it's winter like there's a snowstorm outside you don't really see flies like that that's number one number two why would you use a mop to try to kill a fly maybe a piece of paper maybe a towel something like that but a mop but either way like it is what it is I'm gonna call the contractor, or maybe I'll do it myself. I don't know, it's a door, it can't be that hard, right? You got the hinges, I get a new door, put it on. How bad could it be? I never changed the door before, but I guess it's the same like a light bulb. But overall, I mean, down to like the fridge. Look at the fridge. The fridge is like super clean. Like they really, in the freezer. 
There's a little stuff here and there that, you know, can have cleaned up before the next guest. But overall, let me see the stove. What we got in the stove? Because I know they was using the stove a lot. Yeah, overall though, overall I'm not mad at it. It could have been worse. They was here for pretty much three months. Um, but it let me know that the midterm, I, I, I don't think I'm really, I don't think I really want to do the midterm. Short term, couple days, get in, get out, move on. Um, I think that's it for me. I see little things here and there like this. Um, this mark wasn't here before. I don't know what that's about. This mark wasn't here either. Well, the camera, not really picking up. Let me see. See that? Wasn't there. That definitely wasn't there. Um, so, it is what it is. Bathroom, not that bad either. It smells decent in here. So, like, you can tell like they used some bleach and cleaned up. So, it's cool. Like, I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. But I did learn a lot. I learned a lot in this process. And just so for people who want to do Airbnb, there's some things you just, there's some things you want to be aware of if you want to start an Airbnb, especially in somewhere like New York. Uh, right now, I'm probably the cheapest, cheapest two bedroom Airbnb on the platform. Like I've checked and like, for what the quality you're getting from what I have does not compare. On another note though, I will say it's pretty dope running an Airbnb because you meet so many different people from all over the world. Like in your mind, you'll think, okay, yeah, I live in New York. People are visiting, maybe in the States, but I got people from Korea, from Russia, Italy, like Finland. There's so many different people coming to visit for whatever reason, right? Whether their kid is going to college over here, someone's in a hospital in New York, a business trip, so many different reasons. And then you meet like, you know, you get in touch with all these different cultures. It's kind of, it's kind of dope. So I'm actually booked out. Like I'm not, my calendar's not like a hundred percent booked. It's not even like 80% booked. But I have bookings roughly, you know, like at least two to three bookings every month. So I'm confident that once I get some more reviews, things will pick up and I don't gotta be like underpricing myself. But this first, this first guest has shown me a lot and some things I can improve on just so like make systems in place to make myself feel a bit more comfortable. Um, but we're gonna go over that. And just some things that, you know, I would share in case you guys are planning on doing Airbnb or struggling to get started, maybe some things to look out for, some red flags, just you know, just, just the experience of this first guest. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about this first guest and just my overall experience with what I had to deal with, things I liked, things I didn't like. And the first thing that you should know though is that Essentially, this was a midterm rental, meaning that it's less than the typical long-term lease of 12 months and more, but it's more than a short-term lease of like a couple days, a couple nights, or a week or two. This first guest stayed roughly about three months. Now, did I want to do three months? No. But last year when New York changed their laws and they banned, essentially banned short-term rentals, you need a license or registration to host anyone for less than 30 days. That was right around the time I was getting my Airbnb up and running. So by the time the law went in effect, I could not host anyone for less than 30 days. I had to get a registration. I applied for my registration back in June. And I'm, I just got, I just now got my registration. So in that middle where I, you know, I didn't have the registration, I still needed to book somebody because the apartment was vacant and I needed some money coming in to help pay for the mortgage. So what I did was offer some midterm rentals. And you know, at first I put it on the platform. I put it on the platform at like what I thought was a respectable price. Sort of in line with everybody else, actually a little bit under everyone else. But I was, no one was hitting me up. Not one person reached out to book. Not even one person reached out to ask about the place. Like, hey, where's it located? Anything like that. And I think part of the reason was, cause like my photos were cool. The location is good. Transportation is good. The price was good. 
but it was a new Airbnb. I had no reviews. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't book somewhere for 30 days or more that had no reviews. It's different booking an Airbnb for a weekend, right? You may be willing to take the chance if it has no reviews just based on the price and pictures alone. But to book somewhere for 30 days plus, three months in fact, and no reviews, it's kind of risky. So I lowered the price. And I mean, I lowered the price tremendously because I really just wanted a review because I had no idea whether or not I would actually get the short-term rental, right? And listen, bruh, by this time, you got the mortgage, you got taxes, you got insurance, you got a water bill, like things is hitting you. And, and hold up, I had bought all the furniture. So like I was spending money and I wanted to recoup and just like get the ball rolling. Because even if I were to do midterm rentals, because like say the registration didn't work out, I would still need like somebody in here while I get like the travel nurses and get in contact with agencies. I would still need some of some income coming in while I work on that on the back end. But sure enough, I lowered the price like substantially and then people started reaching out. And this one person reached out, they had they had a decent amount of reviews, not like one or two, but they still didn't have like 10 in the middle somewhere. And they wanted a book for roughly three months. So I did my screening process, asked them why they're coming, who's coming, all those type of questions just to make sure I'm safe. Cause once again, it's New York and tenant laws is kind of crazy over here. And essentially they got this entire apartment for roughly a thousand dollars per month. So you gotta think about a two bedroom, brand new renovated kitchen, washer dryer, private bathroom, all that for a thousand dollars a month is unheard of. You can't, you could barely get a room in New York for a thousand dollars per month. So sure enough, they stayed here and they asked me to extend <laughs> like, yo, we love the place. Can we extend it? Of course you want to extend because the price is crazy and the place is brand new. They were the, they were the first people staying in here actually, because not only is the furniture new, but the floors, like we ripped up the floors, brand new floors, brand new appliances. They were the first people to use the oven, the microwave, the fridge. They're the first people to lay on that bed. Um, the entire apartment is all brand The electrical, everything you could think of, it's been gut renovated. So they loved it. Um, but fortunately for me, during that time, I got approved by New York City for the short-term rental. So, so I was like, nah, we're not, we, <laughs> We can't afford to extend your, your reservations, not happening. And not to mention, there were some things I did not like. For one, I have a no smoking unit and they were smoking here and they claimed they weren't, weren't, but like, I know the smell of weed, I could smell it. And the other guests could smell it because smoke travels. That was number one. Um, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't a fan of that. I didn't like that. That in addition to the fact that the price was super low, where it's like, it's not sustainable to carry that for months on end was a problem. Um, also I have an in-unit washer and dryer and maybe two days after they came, they will, they use the washer and dryer four times per day for like almost like a week straight. Um, and I only know this because it's one of those new high tech wash and dryers, like one unit, like it washes and dries with one machine and there's an app. So I'm getting like, you know, notifications on the app about washing and drying, washing and drying. And I'm like, how much clothes do you have where you're washing and drying for five, six days in a row, four times a day? Um, it didn't make sense. So I, you know, that came with a higher water bill. And these, these are the things that you don't necessarily think of when you're running a midterm space or a short-term space. You don't really realize, you can't predict what the guests will do or how they will use the items, how they're gonna cook if they're going to move furniture around, like, you know, if they're going to play music, you can't predict, you can just try to control what you can, but you don't, you just don't know. Um, but I, but I would say those are like the two main things I didn't like. And also the damage on a, the bedroom door, of course, not cool. Um, the mop and the fly thing still kind of, still kind of confuses me. Like, why would you try to hit a fly with a mop? On the other hand though, um, what I did like, because everything wasn't all bad, I liked that it was only the people on the reservation that attended. So it was only two people in this apartment. And I liked that because they kept their word. That's what sometimes people will come in, add another guest, throw a party. It was none of that. I mean, they had like loud music going, but it wasn't like, you know, an event, so to speak. So 
I was cool with that. But it let me realize the midterm space, at least in New York, bro, I don't think it's really makes that much sense for the risk because if someone stays 30 days or more in New York, they have tenant rights. So yeah, the money might be a little bit more, but you risk them not leaving anyway because they have tenant rights. So if they don't want to leave, they probably don't have to. So I'd rather stick to the short term space, you know, rent out for a couple of nights, have the cleaner come through, turn it over. Hopefully nothing really gets damaged and then move on to the next guest, meet some new people and, and just do it that way. I'm done for today. I was planning on possibly going to one more property, but I'm tired. It's been a long day, a lot of shoveling, a lot of salt. And it's just the life of somebody who invests in property in New York. You know, you want to do some things to make sure that you are not liable and that your business functions as it should. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Peace.